you just want to have multiple exit strategies when it comes to your deals because the market could shift it could change they could even come in and order uh, you know offer us two three times more than what we paid for right now which we would definitely turn down right <laughs> What's up guys welcome back to the channel uh, today we're going to be breaking down a property that ben and i actually just acquired as you can see it's actually two properties on one lot and i'm going to be breaking down why we decided to purchase these how we acquired them and uh, the multiple exit strategies that we're looking at and uh, how you guys can buy real estate like this because we did not use any of our own money to purchase these properties and we don't plan on bringing a dollar out of our own pocket or at least that's always the plan we'll see how it goes uh, but let's go take a look and break down this deal as I was saying, we closed on this property last week and uh, you can see it's two properties on one lot. So this front house is actually a two bedroom, one bath. It's about 912 square feet. And then in the back, this is actually a four bedroom, uh, two bath. It's around uh, 1200 square feet. Uh, what we realized though, when we walked here and you guys will see from the walkthrough that we initially did, there's a tenant in place that the bottom is actually a one unit. Uh, it's gonna be a one bed, one bath. And then we're gonna turn the top it's a three bedroom, uh, one bath up top. We're actually gonna turn that into a two bed, one bath and add a kitchen. And the way it's set up when you walk in, you go upstairs. So it's already set up. We just need to add a wall, add the kitchen and uh, we'll be good to go. And that was one of the you know reasons that we wanted to purchase this property is because we saw the opportunity to turn it from a duplex technically, right? Cause it's a multifamily. We're two properties on one lot and we're gonna turn that into a triplex having the bottom unit and the top unit. All right, and so as we walk around here, you can see that the property isn't in terrible condition. Uh, the main eyesore is really the siding. It's an older siding with the Houston heat. Uh, you can see it's kind of melted up. And the roof is a little bit older, but I think we can get another five to seven years out of it. There's little things like the fascia uh, that need to be replaced, but the person that we bought it from actually had just painted the house on the inside so when we go inside you'll see uh you know how nice it actually is and it's been very well taken care of um but yeah the back is window units the front is ac our tenant is actually an ac person so uh everything is working lovely with this front unit so not a lot of space back here uh, but we do have like a little uh, yard as well nothing too crazy but something i want to point out while we're back here it's important to know your areas and where you're purchasing if you guys have been following us we've been buying heavily in the fifth ward area and i'm going to explain to you guys why but maybe you guys can get a hint if you see what these are behind us these are actually brand new builds uh, that they're going on all across the neighborhood we're on the south side of i-10 our other properties are on the north side which the expansion and the growth hasn't hit that side of I-10 like it has this side, but we see the growth that's coming. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna break down what that growth actually is in just a minute. But uh, let's take a look on the inside and then I'm gonna have Mr. Benjamin break down how we got this property, uh, how we got in touch with the owner and all that good stuff as well. All right, so like I told you guys, this front house is a two bed, one bath. Now, a lot of this stuff is original, but it has been taken care of. So, you know, these wood floors, they can be restored, uh, but they're not terrible right now. The old owner had just painted the entire house. Not the best paint job, but uh, right now for what we're looking to do is get a long-term tenant. When I say long-term, uh, we're only going to rent these out for probably a year. We have one tenant in the back. We're going to make those changes Add another tenant upstairs and then we're gonna get a tenant in here. So the plan is to rent this front house out for about $1,200. We're gonna, we already have the tenant at the bottom back there. Uh, he's paying about $900. And then uh, when we get the upstairs rented back there, we're gonna try to get it rented for around 900 to 1,000 as well. So if you guys can do simple math, we wanna be all cash flow for the first year around $3,000. And I know we will have a mortgage right now. We're paying a higher interest rate because we did use uh, private money. So our note right now is around $1,600 a month. 
So even if we get one more tenant in, we'll already be cash flowing. Once we get two more tenants in, we'll be making a lot more cash flow, as you can see. And then our plan is to just stack that money up over the first year and then basically reinvest it into the property and turn all of these units into Airbnbs. All right, what's going on everybody? Ben Buys Houses here. Uh, so yeah, in a nutshell, basically, we got this property from a cold call, but it was actually a cold call from some months ago that I spoke with her. Um, she just wasn't ready to sell at the time and we kind of lost communication. I backdoor followed up with her a few months later and I got her on the phone. She was very firm with her asking price of 150. Off the rip, it was already a, a, a golden goose egg deal. So there was no back and forth in regards to price. I could tell she was gonna be a firm one. Um, so I told her, you know, if I could do the 150, what happens next? She said, I'll meet you at the closing table. So that was already a great sign. Um, the one thing, the one caveat to that whole situation was that she needed earnest money to be directly sent to her. And uh, as we all know, uh, that's a no-no. You want to definitely get a third party involved like your title company to hold that $3,000 in escrow. Um, but I did not want to risk anything. I didn't want to risk her losing trust in me because she was really just trying to vet me out um, you know, as a, as a real buyer because she had a lot of wholesalers reach out to her um, that wouldn't put earnest money down directly to her. And uh, yeah, she just, and that's why she never sold basically. So. After I put the earnest money down, I came and viewed the property, beautiful property. We already have an existing tenant here paying 900, like Derek said, and it's just gonna be a beautiful thing. All right guys, so ultimately the main reason why, you know, this is such a great deal and why we bought the property, land right now in this highly gentrifying area of Fifth Ward is going for $100,000 for a square foot parcel of land. So essentially, we bought the property for 150, and we have two houses on the property. So we're literally buying two houses, $25,000 each a pop. So beautiful deal, all the numbers make sense. We're just gonna backdoor, touch up around the, the properties and refinance out of that initial uh, private lender loan. Now, like Ben said, 4,000 square foot lots in this neighborhood is already going for $100,000 just the land. So like he said, we got these two houses and the land for $150,000. Now, the reason that it was so appetizing for us, and Ben and I are always looking at the long game. So if you've been following Houston and all the developments going on, as you can see, we have the skyline in our backdrop right here. On top of that, about two streets over that way, they're doing what is called the East River Development. Now, if you're not aware what that is, in Houston, we have these big center plazas that are like live in and lifestyle type uh, properties where they'll have nice restaurants, they'll have higher end, you know, living apartments. So in the East River, they're gonna be developing that which is twice as big as most of them that they've built in Houston. On top of that, they're adding a golf course. On top of that, they're adding 350 apartment units as well. So you can imagine what that's gonna do for this area, right? As you can see in the back, we have the new developments. Over the next two to five years, once they start really getting into this development, because they just broke ground, the property values, well, you can imagine are gonna go up and we're gonna own a triplex here, not to mention the other units, because what's gonna happen is once they start running out of room to build over here, they're gonna start building on the other side and it's even cheaper on the north side of I-10. So the fact that we were able to get a good deal here and we have our other six properties on the other side and we're gonna be buying more, people are starting to know that we're buying heavily over here because what's gonna happen in the future is we're either gonna build this massive Airbnb portfolio to then sell off to a big Airbnb Airbnb company and cash out and then roll into a bigger development or we're gonna level all of these and just build up new and cash out that way right but either way we have multiple exit strategies like I said we're gonna cash flow regular with regular tenants we're gonna Airbnb and cash flow even more um, 
you just want to have multiple exit strategies when it comes to your deals because the market could shift it could change they could even come in and order uh, you know offer us two three times more than what we paid for right now which we've definitely turned down right um, but everything ben and i do is for the long game and that's because you want to use real estate to actually build wealth and the only way to do that is acquiring properties the last thing i want to end on with you guys is just maximizing your property's potential right a lot of these properties you're not going to be making that much money in the front end right the first year or two um, but in the long run it's the upside is crazy right that's why you need to do other things other than wholesaling and flipping ways that we look to squeeze extra money out of these properties not only are we going to be doing a traditional rental for a year we're going to be doing section 8 and as we know section 8 pays a little bit higher and they only do year leases so that's perfect for us on top of that like i said we're going to be turning this basically duplex into a triplex that we're adding a whole nother unit by not putting a lot of money into it so you just have to look at ways to get creative especially in this competitive market where hard deals are you know they're so hard to come by uh, that you have to get, you know, you have to look at things outside of the box. And uh, the best way to do that is to have smarter people around you. So when Ben and I looked at this, we already knew this, you know, could be turned into a triplex. Let's look at doing the section eight. And uh, like I said, we're, we're gonna have a lot of exit strategies to cash out on. And I'm so excited, you know, for this East River development that's, that's coming up. And not to mention, we have downtown views. All right, so I just wanted to end this video with showing you guys what else we have going on. So this is on the north side of I-10, as you guys can see, these four white homes behind us. Ben and I actually purchased these owner finance, so we only had to bring $15,000 out of pocket. As you guys can see, most of the other area has already been developed. Everything around us is new builds. And they're just little two one homes, uh, nothing special, 500 square feet. Uh, but our goal is to get them rented out, all four of them, uh, for about a year, same plan as the other one, and then slowly turn them into Airbnbs. So once they're all completed, we'll have about eight Airbnbs all within a mile radius. Um, so it'll be lovely. And then like I said, in the future, we can either sell off or cash out and build new like everybody else has done. Um, I appreciate you guys if you've made it this far in the video. If you don't already, like, subscribe, tell a friend. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok as I'm dropping two videos a week. Until next time, peace.